What's up humans, this is Dan's Dev and it's level 2 in the object-oriented thinking curriculum and today we're going to talk about how the information is measured. A byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. You surely heard these words before and maybe even understand the difference, but today I'm going to dispel all the uncertainties about this topic and we will see how the computer interprets it. As you probably know, in our everyday life we use a decimal numeral system. So we have all the numbers from 0 to 9 that in total is 10 different digits. However, computers see the world slightly different and they use a different numeral system that is called binary, where they only have two digits, 0 and 1. There are also a bunch of other numeral systems such as octal and hexadecimal. The difference between all of them is how many numbers they have in their alphabet. So in case of an octal, it will be 8 and 16 for hexadecimal. But for now, let's focus on binary. Let's start with a bit. A bit is the smallest possible piece of information that a computer can hold. Eventually, all the information is being transferred into a binary form of ones and zeros. But how do we store all the pictures, songs and text? You probably say that it's far different from ones and zeros, but not really. In reality, what you see as a picture or a text is just a one of the representations of a binary sequence. Just because of our computer can only process binary, no matter what's the data, it will be eventually represented as a sequence of ones and zeros for a computer to understand. But let's see how it's all working out for us. After the bit goes the byte. Byte has 8 bits and it can hold any number in range from 0 to 255. Why? Because the native numeral system in our computer only has two numbers in its alphabet. So if we could take the number 2 and empower it by the number 8, which is the amount of bits in a byte, we'll get the number 256. But because we include 0, the cap number that we can store will be 255. So for a 4-byte sequence, we would be able to store a number up to 4,294,967,295. You can get this number if you take a power of 2 to 32. Why 32? Because 4 multiply 8 is 32 bits, and therefore there are 32 bits in 4 bytes. Then goes the kilobyte, and the kilobyte has a kilo, or to be precise, 1024 bytes. We're not going to calculate how big of a number you could store in a kilobyte, but we can guess that in a kilobyte of a memory you could store hundreds of numbers, or in one really long number. At the end of the day, a computer will still see it as a combination of bits, and doesn't really matter what you have stored in it. After the kilobyte goes the megabyte, and it has 1024 kilobytes. Using one megabyte you could store a couple of low quality pictures. Then goes the gigabyte. There are 1024 megabytes in a gigabyte, and with this amount of memory you can store hundreds of high resolution pictures or even a movie. But that's not the end. A terabyte has 1024 gigabytes and it's normal hard drive size for some computers nowadays. You can probably think of how many pictures and videos you could store in one terabyte, probably thousands and thousands. But why is it always 1024? In theory, starting with a kilobyte, a kilo always means a thousand, but because we have a binary system to begin with, the closest number to a thousand will be 1024, that is 2 by the power of 10. So how does all the information get transformed from our ordinary perspective to a binary? There are numerous amounts of encodings that a computer is using to convert different data types to a binary and back. So let's take a look at the most obvious one, converting text to a binary and back. There's this one thing called ASCII table. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and every symbol in this table has a fixed size of a byte. This means that every byte of information encoded with ASCII will be represented as a number from 0 to 255 and then correlated with the corresponding symbol from the table. For example, let's take the word hello and try to convert it into the binary using ASCII table. First, let's change all the symbols to the numbers. After doing that, we will get something like this. Note that capital letters has a different code than small letters, so if we wanted to encode hello with a non-capital first letter, the code will be slightly different. Now that we have our word encoded using ASCII table, let's actually convert it to a binary code because the numbers we have now are still in a decimal numeral system. I'm not going to explain the entire process of converting decimals to binary because it's not the purpose of this video, and if you're really interested, there are a massive amount of videos on this topic. 
So I'm just going to use this website to convert our text to a binary. From here we see how the information can be represented differently but still contain the exact same data. And this principle is used literally everywhere on every single computer. And I hope you like this video, thumbs up if you learned something new today, follow the channel if you want to stay up to date with the world of advanced technologies, and see you in the next episode of the Danza.